In the literary realm of Abraham Verghese, a towering figure known not only for his acclaimed novel Cutting for Stone, but also for his distinguished roles as a physician and a professor of medicine, we are beckoned into the sprawling embrace of his monumental opus, The Covenant of Water. With a gesture both poignant and personal, Verghese extends a heartfelt hand to his early readers, inviting them on a journey that commences with a profound connection to his late mother, the enchanting Miriam. She, a masterful raconteur, had, in response to a grandchild's curiosity about her own life, penned a 40-page manuscript, a precious artifact. It is within the pages of this manuscript, with its poignant legacy, that Verghese finds inspiration for his narrative odyssey. A tribute, profound in its essence, is hereby unveiled, a dedication to Miriam that strikes a deep chord within us, a dedication that has also garnered the acknowledgement of none other than the luminary Oprah Winfrey, who has recently anointed this novel as the latest addition to her celebrated book club. Now, Covenant unfurls its tale in the verdant tapestry of Kerala, the gem of India's southern coast. Here, Verghese orchestrates a sumptuous symphony, a harmonious intermingling of genealogy, the practice of medicine, and tales of love. The stage is set in the early 20th century, a temporal realm stretching its reach to the tumultuous 1970s, every era swathed in meticulous detail. But it is not merely the passage of time that knits the fabric of this story, it is a cryptic curse, an enigma haunting the family at the story's heart. Inexplicably, in each generation, a family member meets a watery demise, even though those forewarned by ominous signs take every precaution never to meet the condition head-on. Verghese, the master storyteller, weaves these threads of time, fate, and destiny into an intricate narrative tapestry. Wars, monsoons, famine, all are rendered in vivid, sensorial strokes, as if we, too, were there to taste the hunger in the air, to feel the oppressive weight of the condition. Moments of profound significance are imbued with a palpable physicality, evoking the very essence of life as it plays out upon a grand cinematic canvas. Much like the sweeping landscapes of Dr. Zhivago, Verghese immerses us in a world of floods, fires, pestilence, and the bustling streets of an India that is both timeless and evolving. Diverse characters, some entering the narrative by seemingly improbable coincidences, fill the stage, yet their presence is never questioned. Their urgency triumphs over skepticism. Loss and tragedy, when they descend, are not mere accidents but ineluctable truths. The beating heart of this sprawling narrative is none other than its vibrant cast of characters, their richly detailed lives, and the immersive exploration of diverse cultures, landscapes, and customs across the eras. Big Amachi, the indomitable matriarch, stands as a testament to resilience and the enduring human spirit. She embarks on her journey as a young bride, eventually becoming the backbone of her family. Births and cherished friendships, even a bond with a beloved elephant, are contrasted with heart-wrenching tragedies, some foretold, others arriving as shocking twists of fate. Local humor, a light-hearted touch, offers glimpses into the human condition, shedding witty insights on life's many challenges and ever-shifting priorities. Verghese introduces us to a cadre of compelling characters, their lives destined to intersect. Among them, the enigmatic Digby Kilger, a young medical graduate fleeing a traumatic past in Glasgow to seek surgical experience in the heart of India, Madras. Medical crises and dilemmas propel the narrative, allowing Verghese to draw upon his extensive medical knowledge and profound humanism. The scenes featuring Digby's journey to recovery at a remote leprosy sanctuary under the compassionate care of the Swedish village Dr. Rune Orkvist brim with touching and enlightening moments. Verghese eloquently delineates the profound impact of Digby's wounded hands on Rune, underscoring the centrality of love in the healing process. Verghese's literary craftsmanship exhibits unwavering consistency, marked by a keen sense of pacing and an opulent, sensuous prose that can at times metamorphose into lyrical rhapsodies. The evening breeze of Madras, its scent and feel, the city itself, are portrayed with a vividness that envelopes the reader. Verghese excels in rendering tender love scenes, graphic surgical procedures, delectable culinary descriptions, and incisive observations on the intricacies of class and caste divisions, both in Glasgow and India. 
Throughout the sprawling narrative, Verghese's deep empathy for his ensemble of characters shines forth, as does his remarkable ability to inhabit a diverse array of perspectives, including those of the many women who grace the story. While elements of his prose may occasionally assume a broader tone, they possess a resonance that accumulates in power as the reader delves deeper into the narrative. Consistently, Verghese weaves his profound love for art and literature into the narrative's tapestry, reflecting his unwavering belief in their transformative power. As a peculiar neighbor guides Amachi's son Philippos into the realm of reading, beginning with Moby Dick, Amachi contemplates the nature of literature, a world that captivates with its allure but also potentially deceives with its beguiling mysteries. In the hands of Verghese, the Covenant of Water is not just a novel, it is an invocation of the human spirit, a tapestry of stories that resonate with the very essence of life, and a testament to the enduring power of literature. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and like. Your support is essential, 